Hi, I'm Kurt Lattenberger with the airplanesandrockets.com website and I'm back with the next part of my little demonstration on how to cover an airplane with silk span and tissue. Last time we just talked about some of the materials and tools that we're using and a little bit about the strategy of, of what to do and in what order for the covering. So I left off talking about how I brush on a coat, a complete coat of thin nitrate dope along the, the outer edges where the silk span is going to be attached of all of the, the open surfaces, the open framework surfaces. And then I also brush on a solid coat over top of all of the, the solid balsa areas on the wing and on the fuselage. And what I don't do though is I don't brush dope onto the tops of the ribs or onto the tops of these fuselage stringers in the turtleneck or any of these vertical stringers on the fuselage or these, these uh, stringers in the tail surfaces. And the reason is that when we put the silk span on, we're only going to want it to be attached to the perimeters and not across the bays in that area because we want the silk span to be able to shrink and adjust itself as evenly as possible over that open area. If you were to put dope on these wing ribs and then when you put the uh, silk span on, put dope over top of that, that dope would dry faster and adhere to the wing ribs uh, faster than the water would evaporate from the silk span. And if that happened, then you're going to have every little individual bay trying to make its own adjustment for tautness and it can end up causing uh, localized warps and twists in the finish in, in the end that you might be able to see. So to avoid that, and it makes it easier anyway, again, we're just going to attach the perimeters as, uh, as necessary. When we're finished, we'll go back and we'll trim off the, the overlap on the silk span. We'll go ahead and seal those edges down and then we'll continue from there over the next section. Once the whole airplane has the silk span attached, then we'll use also about a 50-50 mix of thinner to nitrate dope and we'll be taking a larger brush. I have a, a one inch camel hair brush here that I use. The bristles are nice and soft because um, it's not quite as, as evident on silk span because it, it's very tough compared to tissue. But if you're using the Japanese tissue paper and even when it's dry, when you put the dope on it, if you press down into the paper too hard, it can cause sagging and stretching that might not shrink back up again. And it also forces the dope all the way through the paper or the... Uh, the silk span and it can cause droplets to form underneath where it, it sits there in pools and you'll be able to see that in the finish later on because it looks like a stiff area in the midst of an open bay. Now you won't notice that on a solid wood surface but we want to avoid that in, in the open bays. So it's important to have a nice soft supple brush and the camel hairs even though they're a little more expensive tend to do the job. This is about a 3 8 inch wide brush that I use for doing this initial application. It depends on how big the balsa surfaces are that you're going to use. It's, it's big enough that it's not too laborious to cover the big uh, solid surfaces, uh, but if you tried to use anything smaller, it would just take too much work trying to get it on and to keep a wet edge on the dope. On, on small surfaces like up here on the Sparky, I'd probably use closer to a quarter inch brush to do that. And there's almost no solid uh, balsa area on that anyway. So I've already started out just to have something prepared. I did the, the center section on the bottom of the top wing in between the, the cabin struts. And then I did the, the inner sections from the root towards the, the wing struts. And you can see that this is still left hanging here. It hasn't been sealed down yet, but everything's been trimmed. And I like to leave, if possible, about a quarter of an inch overlap and try not to ever leave an overlap into a bay area because you're going to have to sand those overlapped areas in order to make the seams invisible later on. And the last thing you want to do is sand in an open bay area, particularly up against a sharp edge, like against the, the rib edge or the leading edge 
because the sandpaper, before you know it, will bite right into that edge and you'll end up having a slit there that you're going to have to repair. So, since I've got this first bottom surface on, and by the way, the, the order of covering generally is from the bottom up so that every seam that you put, every overlap, tends to be down so that edge from the overlap is facing down instead of from the, uh, from the bottom. If, if we cover the side, say, of the fuselage first and then put the bottom piece on, that overlap would be here and looking down you'd be able to see that edge unless you took real good care to, uh, to sand it so that it was invisible. And that's not that hard to do, but you also want to use as little dope as possible. Uh, you need enough to make it strong and durable, but you also want to use as little as possible to keep the weight down. The same philosophy goes on the wings. You typically cover the bottoms first and then trim off even with the leading and trailing edge. And then you take the top surface and put it on, and then you put an overlap going underneath so that you can't uh, see it from there. And so that's why I started with the bottom. This is all dry. It was put on. It was done yesterday. For sealing these edges, uh, both in the for the, the under piece and for the upper piece, what I do because the the uh, silk span, even though it's very supple, it can resist laying down where you want it when it's dry, even when you put uh, dope on it. So what I do is I just take the dope. And I, I put it into a small container like this rather than use it out of the, the large container because then you don't have to worry about evaporation or contamination of the entire uh, can of it while you're working. And besides, if you want to thin it, particularly if you have a new can, there's no room in the can to do it. You just need to be careful that whatever container you put it in, uh, typically it's going to be glass or metal, so that's not a problem. But you need to make sure that the cap is made of a material that won't be attacked by the dope, be it nitrate or butyrate. Uh, the, the plastic that are in these caps, they're in, in uh, standard McCormick uh, spice jars, seem to hold up very well. I've been using them for years and just haven't tried anything else because they've always worked. In fact, I even keep MEK in this one, and even with MEK in there, it tends to not attack that top. And this, this has been in here for years. So what I do is I take a, just a small cup of water and I'll dip my finger in it and then I'll just I'll wipe it along the edge where that free part of the uh, either tissue paper in the case of the smaller planes or the silk span in case of the larger ones and that'll, that'll get that uh, piece of covering more supple and you, you can tell visually as soon as it's wet. And don't, don't put too much in there because you don't want the grain of the wood to stand up. And then just get a little bit of dope on there and brush it in. Make sure that you're brushing it in the direction that is going to keep the tissue or the silk span from folding back on itself. And then I always use a, a kind of a 45 degree wiping action with my finger so that it's pulling it back and then down on the far side just, just to seal it down there. So you go along the entire edge, and I'm not going to do the whole airplane, just this one little example area. Again, kind of go out at a 45 degree angle so that you're both pushing the tissue out and down at the same time, and then come around that leading edge and just wipe it down, and then you can do a light wiping over. If you do that, almost guaranteed it's going to stay down like it's supposed to for you. So, we're pretty close to our 10 minute YouTube limit again, so I'm going to end it here and when we come back next time, I'll take a piece of uh, uh, silk span and wet it and go ahead and do the application so you can see uh, how I do it anyway. Alright, thank you. Mm -hmm.